Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to share with you how I decorated these real pumpkins. I wanted something that was festive and cute for a fall decoration and something that didn't take a lot of time and these worked perfectly. So let's get started. Materials needed. Obviously, you need a pumpkin or two. The pumpkin I bought at the store is very small. For the color, I am using Pearl X metallic powdered pigments. I bought a small variety pack like one of these shown here. The Pearl X pigments are a powder, so they must be mixed with a binder. For that, I am using clear Elmer's glue. The clear glue keeps the pigments metallic sheen whereas white glue significantly reduces that sheen. I used clear glue with the larger pumpkin and white glue with the smaller one. You can really see a difference in the metallic sheen level. I'm using a cheap plastic craft paint palette to mix the pigment in. To apply the pigment, I used embossing tools. These come in sets and they have an assortment of ball tip sizes on them. Pigment mixing and color alternatives. Squeeze a small, pea-sized amount of clear glue into a mixing well. Then use a dry, clean paintbrush to retrieve a small amount of pigment from a jar. Place the pigment on the glue and then mix until thoroughly combined. Wipe the excess mixture from the paintbrush onto the edge of the well. Use the bottom of a pumpkin to test out colors. I'm using a glitter marker. The purple worked great, but the blue did not. A metallic gel pen did not work. But a metallic marker worked wonderfully. And of course, acrylic paints will work. There are metallic paints available like I'm using, but if you have some regular non-metallic paints, use those. They will work. Pumpkin Prepping I prep my pumpkins by washing them and then rinsing them with hot water. I wash them twice. I did this to remove any dirt, pesticides, wax, etc. After I was done washing and rinsing them, I set them on a towel and let them air dry. Pumpkin 1 I tested how dark the burn results were on the bottom of the pumpkin. I am using a solid brass, large, rounded-end writer pen tip. You can also use a writer pen tip or a large ball pen tip. I have the heat set as high as the Good Crafter Pyography machine will go. I'm burning a series of large dots on each rib of the pumpkin. The line of dots is highest on the top of the rib and gradually curves downward towards the valley between two ribs. I pressed the pin tip to the pumpkin and briefly held it there. I will warn you not to press very hard because you can puncture the skin. The underlying flesh does not darken. After burning in the curving line of dots on all the ribs, I burn two dots below the line on the apex of each rib. Below the two dots, I drew a teardrop shape. Then I switched to a shader pin tip and tried to make it look 3D with the use of shading. That didn't work out well, so I gave up and burned it to a fairly uniform color. The solid brass tip worked better on the pumpkin, so I switched back to it, and I reburned over the first teardrop so that it was a dark brown to black color. I'm using a circular motion or scribbly type of burn stroke to fill in the teardrop, and I'm using a fairly light hand pressure. I decided that the apex dot should be larger, so I reburned over all of them. I did this by just holding the pin tip in place until a larger dot formed. I am burning free-handed, so the teardrops are not the exact same size. If you want your design to be more uniform, 
then you'd need to use a stencil or pencil in your design first. After all of the teardrops were burned in, I rotated the pumpkin and burned a line of dots along the bottom. This line has a softer curve than the top one does, and I think it provides a nice frame for the teardrops. The last bit of burning I did was to add two large dots in the valley below the lower line. Since the pen tip I was using was so large, it didn't fit in the valley very well, so I ended up with double dots. That was plenty good enough for me. The burning is done, so let's add some color. I am using Pearl X Super Russet number 654. It's a reddish copper color that I think looks great for fall. I'm applying a line of dots just above the line of burn dots. I'm using one of the medium-sized embossing tool ball tips. I'm also adding a line of dots just below the lower line of burn dots. I also add large dots between the large ones on the valley. I work a couple of pumpkin ridges at a time, making sure that my fingers are placed away from the paint. Then I rotate the pumpkin and continue, and continue painting on a few more of the ribs. My dots are not uniform in size, but that does not concern me. This is supposed to be a fun and easy project to create festive decorations for my holiday family get-together. And while my pumpkins are not perfect, my artwork is not perfect, but at the end of the day, I accomplished my goals and ended up with some cute and festive-looking pumpkins. After I was done with the russet red, I allowed the paint to dry before continuing on. I hadn't smeared anything, so I figured let's not push it. For my second color, I'm using Pearl X Turquoise number 686. I'm applying a line of painted dots just below the upper burn line. I'm also applying another line of painted dots just above the lower painted burn line. Like before, I'm working a couple of pumpkin ribs at a time and making sure that my fingers stay out of the paint. I only applied the two colors. Color is not my strong suit. If you want more color or you want different colors, by all means, do what you want. Customize this to your preferences. This is how the pumpkin looks after it dried. Pumpkin 2 this pumpkin starts out the same as the last one. I begin by burning a row of dots that rises and falls along the upper portion of the pumpkin. The difference is that I am using a wire tip handset with a large ball pin tip equipped. This tip is smaller than the solid brass tip I used on the last pumpkin, so it takes more work to get a larger dot on the rib apex. Instead of a teardrop, I am using a solid brass pen tip. It's a stamp that reminds me of a snowflake. Since the pumpkin is curved, I have to rock the pen tip around to make sure I get a good impression. If you don't get a perfect impression, and I didn't on numerous occasions, it is possible to re-stamp the image. Just take your time and carefully realign the stamp with the image. To get my dotted line more uniformly distanced from the pumpkin stem, I burned all of the apex dots on the tops of the ribs first. Then I burned the rest of the dots. I have to say that the solid brass tip pin tips did much better than the wire tip ones. The brass tips can get hotter, so it was easier and quicker to get dark results. For the record, I did try my coal wood burner. I didn't record this, but it performed worse than the, good cra than the wire tip side of the Good Crafter machine. As you burn on the pumpkin, don't be surprised if you hear the occasional popping sound. It is just fluid escaping from the pumpkin that is coming into contact with the hot pin tip. Also, the fluids can make the surface slick, and the pin tip can easily slide around. 
especially when you're rocking it to get a good impression. So be careful. Flip the pumpkin over and repeat the pattern along the lower portion of the pumpkin. Where you want it to be on the pumpkin is your choice. The last bit of burning I did on this pumpkin was to use a diamond-shaped solid metal tip. I created a row of diamonds between the snowflakes. I had problems getting a good impression on the pumpkin valleys, but I didn't worry about that because I knew I could fix it up with a different pen tip once the row was done. And the pen tip I used was the large ball pen tip because it was equipped and I was too lazy to change it out. And it worked well to fill in the diamonds that didn't stamp well. I mixed up a small batch of Pearl X pigment Interference Blue number 671. This color looks either white or blue depending on how the light strikes it. I applied a small dot of color next to each spoke or arm on the snowflakes. Plus I painted a dot in the center of each snowflake. I also applied a dot of color adjacent to the upper and lower points on the diamonds. Afterwards, I mixed up some Reflex Violet number 644 and switched to an embossing tool that had a large ball tip on it. I applied a large dot of purple in the center of each diamond. Then I switched to a smaller bald embossing tool and applied a row of purple dots just above the upper burn line. I also added a dot to and below the lowest spot burn mark in the valley. I repeated this on the bottom of the pumpkin. So a row of dots was painted just below the lower burn line, and I also added a dot on and just above the lowest valley burn mark. After I was done painting, I set the pumpkin aside and let it dry. Here's how the pumpkin looked after it was dried. Pumpkin 3 With this last pumpkin, I used a brass pen tip with a crescent moon design. I stamped the image in the center of one of the pumpkin ribs. Then I rotated the pumpkin and stamped a second image right next to the first one. After that, I stamped all of the images for half of the design and then rotated the pumpkin back and added the second stamping of the crescent moon. After that, I switched to the diamond-shaped solid metal pen tip and burned an image above and below the two crescent moons. I tried to angle the pin tip so that one of the diamond points was positioned near the junction where the two moons touched. For some reason, this pumpkin oozed more liquids, and I had a few areas where I had to reburn to get a good image. Next, I burned a really large dot above the point on the upper diamond and below the point on the lower diamond. I'm using the large rounded in solid metal brass pin tip for this. And since I had that pin tip equipped and it was still good and hot, I added a large dot between the two points on each of the crescent moons. I didn't get the last bit of burning on video, but all I did was add tiny dots above and below the vertical burning. I also added dots to the left and right points on the diamonds. After the dots were burned in, I added a cone shape to the large dots that were near the crescent moons. I am using a small round end writer pen tip for this. The last thing I did was add a large dot at the end of the cone. On the pumpkin, this would be located in the valley. It would have been easier to use the large writer, but I was too lazy to switch back to that one and this one was equipped and hot. Here's how the pumpkin looked after I was done burning it. I am using Pearl Axis Salmon Pink number 642 and applying a line of dots above the burn design. The line of dots curves gently down towards the valleys of the pumpkin and rises up on the ribs above the design. You can see that I painted some other dots. I ended up repainting over those so I'll discuss that when it happens. Afterwards, I applied a line of dots below the burn design. With this row of dots, I didn't curve it as much as I did the upper row. 
Next, I applied a large dot about a quarter inch above the apex dot on the pumpkin ribs. I noticed that I was starting to smear paint, so I began using the stem to rotate the pumpkin. Now paint a line of dots that starts at the large apex dot and angles down to the valley dot that is on the first row of painted dots. I let the pink paint dry, then I painted a row of silver dots between the two rows of pink ones. It was at this time I painted over those painted dots I had done on the cones. I also added a very small dot next to the dot by the diamonds. As for the dot on the cones, if I were to do this project over again, I would omit painting over any of the burn marks. I didn't plan out any of the pumpkins. It was just a spur of the moment and make things up as I went. All things considering, I didn't do too bad. I mentioned before that I'm using silver paint. I forgot to mention that it was number 663. Add the second row of pink dots along the bottom of the pumpkin. You can see I smeared some paint. The Fixing Mistakes chapter will show how I fixed that. I let the pink paint dry and then added the lines of silver paint to finish up the pumpkin. The lines of silver paint were added between the two rows of pink. Here's how the pumpkin looked after everything dried. Alternatives My first brass pen tip created a large dot. A good replacement would be either a large ball pen tip, or you could try using a spoon shader. For the snowflake stamp, I would recommend using a large ball tip or a writer pen tip and drawing in a snowflake-like shape. I burned the center dot first, but I think that should be last. Draw the spokes, then after all the spokes are done, put a dot in the center where they meet. Next up is the diamond shape stamp. For that, I would use a writer pen tip. I would draw in the diamond and then fill it in. You could use the same with the crescent moon stamp, I would again use a writer pen tip to draw in the shape and then fill in the center of it. The last one is the small brass tip writer. I would use either a standard wire tip writer or a medium ball tip. Here's a comparison of the medium next to the large ball tip. If you don't have an embossing tool, you can use the handle end of a paintbrush to apply the paint dots. The tip of a pencil works, and you can dull the tip to get larger dots. Things to be aware of. Use a light hand pressure when burning. If you press too hard, you can break through the skin. The underlying flesh does not darken up. The skin can get slick, and the pen tip can slide especially on deeply curved areas, or when you're rocking the pen tip to get a good impression, so be careful when you're burning. The glue can form thin strings when you lift the embossing tool up. Make sure they are gone before you create a new dot, otherwise you will have paint lines that connect the dots. Fixing Mistakes If you have an image that didn't stamp well, technically burn well, then carefully realign the pen tip over that image. Then reburn over that spot, making sure to angle the pen tip so that the missing area gets burned in. If the pen tip slides or you make a burn mark where you don't want it to be, then carefully scrape that burn mark away using the edge of a sharp knife. Use a little dab of dark paint to hide breaks in the skin. Use a slightly damp, clean paintbrush to carefully remove the smeared paint. I found it helpful to use a Q-tip to remove the last traces of paint. Then make sure the area is dry and repaint over it. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it, and I hope you'll try it. It was really a fun project, and it's so easy to customize. You can use whatever color scheme you want so it matches your decor. And for those of you who like to read verbal instructions, 
I do have a written version of the tutorial on my website, and I will put a link to that blog in the description below. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week.